Welcome to the critical things you absolutely must have in your kitchen pantry and first aid kit. So I'm going to take you a little bit around my house and my garden and I'm going to show you some of the things that are must haves for me and for my family. We're actually going to start in the garden and the reason is pretty obvious. What every Everything that Dr. Foodie promotes is healthy and natural whole foods, plant-based foods. So obviously we're gonna start right here in the garden because this is the essential core base of where we should be getting most of our nutrients. So I have different plots all over our property and some of it I have for a decorative, some of it I have for um, vegetables and herbs and sometimes and some of them I have for the herbal medicines and some I have for the um, and some I have structured and some I just wait and see what mother nature brings to me. So um, everything is always here for a reason. So if you see behind me, I'm gonna walk over to that one. Here's one of the first must have. So if number one is the garden itself, absolutely must have a garden if you're wanting to eat in a way that is gonna nourish the body um, and, and use food for fuel. So this beautiful beauty right here, this is a mullein plant. I know you see these all over in the ditches, but People laugh because I let you know weeds grow all over my, my yard, but it's here for a reason. So number two would be mullein plant. The leaves are absolutely wonderful. Mullein is, is known for, um, for lung health and for respiratory health. And then you can see here, I'll get real close. The little yellow flowers are now starting to bud and look at how many there are gonna be on there. We make mullein oil and it's one of the most fantastic things that you can make for, we just, we, we soak the, the mullein flowers in like olive oil or sunflower oil, make sure all of them are covered. We shake it up a couple times a day, leave that in the sun for about two weeks and we make mullein oil, which is really good. We use it for um, ear infections and things like that. So um, mullein oil is just one of those things that we kind of keep on hand. Um, we have raspberries over there in the corner um, raspberries are awesome as just just nourishment but we also use the leaves of red raspberry leaf so that's wonderful for I use it for for making teas for balancing hormones and things like that so we've got the garden for number one the mullein plant for number two the red raspberry leaves and berries for number three we have usually let's see if I can find oh here we go you guys are gonna love this there we go. See that little dandelion in there? Yep. Beautiful dandelion leaves. Add this to your salad. We can use, whew, that one was a bitter one. We use dandelion a lot. I'm going to show you a tincture that I make with that. So number four is absolutely dandelions. Please, 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 you know, save some spot in your yard where you are not um, <laughs> putting fertilizers and chemicals on these, on these areas that we don't want these, these beautiful sources of nutrients and nourishment. Dandelion, if you look it up, is great for all kinds of things and especially it's known for the liver. So um, I make a, a digestive tonic with it and one that, that we use as a tincture. So let's move on out of the garden and see if I can find the next one. So what I'm looking for is plantain. And it's usually grown, here we've got some, it's usually grown in really rough, patchy, spare spots where it's really kind of weedy. Um, I'm gonna show you down here. You see that here? This is plantain. This is kind of a little abused one. Maybe if I figure it out, I'll show you how a little video that my son made of it. He knows this is medicine, he says. Plantain is one of those very useful little plants that grows all over in your yard. Um, it's we use it and my, my kids know if they get stung by a bee or a mosquito anything itchy or bitey or stingy they go and they grab a plantain leaf they smash it with a rock to release those juices and they slap it right on the area that got stung it's an easy way to take out the sting and the itch right away okay so plantain is everywhere that's one of the most wonderful things that we can use it's useful for everything that's um related to stinging biting itching insects right behind me we have a compost pile so this is where we put all of our leftover vegetation and leaves and grass. Stir that up, we add worms to it. This is what we use to put into our garden. So um, we saw what I call my angel garden and that's where I kind of let nature bring to me what um, is present for and available for that year. I have another patch that's got our basic vegetation, you know, peppers, cauliflowers, broccoli, things like that. We also have, um, if you don't have space for a garden okay because people tell me I live in town or I live in the city I don't have a lot of space for a garden 
And what I say to that is I'm going to show you a little way that you can work around that. So here we've got Walk With Me here. My husband made this art box. So it sits right outside our deck and it has all of my herbs, the ones that we use for kitchen spices, but that I also use to make tinctures and stuff out of and teas. So one of those is mint. Here's a mint leaf. One of those is mint and we use that all the time for digestion. We use it for making teas, but it's one of those wonderful little herbs that you want to have around because it can really ease some stomach cramping. It's especially easy for, you know, any young child, you can pour some hot water over that and they can sip on that or even chew on the leaf. Some of the others that I personally use in here are rosemary, oregano, thyme, parsley, and basil. Um, not just for cooking, but I use those because as we know, our herbs are not just our vegetation and our nourishment, but they also nourish the body in a way that they are the cleansers. They're, they're really good eliminators. They're, you know, the plant medicinals. So they're used in a multitude of ways. We're not going to go over that in this webinar, but there's plenty of information on drfoodie.live for that. So join us in the house. Keep in mind, we are remodeling our house. So, you know, if you see undone parts in our house, come help. I'm mostly kidding. Seriously, though. Into the kitchen we go. Um, a couple of the appliances that are absolutely must-haves. We have a juicer, and we also have, we use the Ninja, but this is also for making our green smoothies and our fruit smoothies for breakfast in the morning. Um, so that's absolutely a must-have appliance. Juicer, smoothie blender. We also have a dehydrator. That would be the next appliance that we absolutely must have. We dehydrate herbs, we dehydrate plants, we dehydrate as fruits are getting, you know, kind of past their time, we dehydrate those and we can keep them and use them for dried fruit. Um, let's look at some of, so here's the other thing, if you don't have a, a spot for a, a garden, you can at least have your herbs and your plant medicines. This is just a simple little um, container that I bought at the garden store. I took a cutting of that plant that we saw inside, the mint plant that I showed you. See how it's developed its own root system? Now we can easily just plant that. We can keep that as our kitchen herb garden, and I do that quite often, especially come winter time when I'm not running around outside gathering everything that I need. So you can easily make your own quick little herbal kitchen garden. You can grow tomatoes in, I mean, you could literally grow anything in all, in all kinds of things. If you walk around your neighborhoods, you see people growing things out of boots and wheelbarrows. Um, you can set up a, a tomato plant in the corner. So let's look at some of the other things that are absolute must-haves. A good knife set and a cutting board. In my mostly raw, fresh kitchen, I'm not using the stove all that often. Um, mostly it's fresh foods that I'm making, so it's a lot of water and cutting, water and cutting, water and cutting. So a good knife set will go a long way with a good cutting board. Your choice of cutting board, we're not going to get into the argument of wood or plastic or what we should be using now. So um, I use next must-have wooden spoons and silicone spatulas. Okay, that's just my preferred. I like to try and keep toxic, least toxic materials as possible. So I use those all the time, silicone and wood. Okay, next thing, must have. Don't think we had it in there. I don't do a lot of frying or, but when I do sauteing of vegetables and things, I use the cast iron. Okay, I know there's a lot going around about which type of pans are the healthiest and which ones you want to be using. I prefer to use the cast iron. And so there's a little bit of care that goes with them, but that's why they are heirloom things that you want to pass down to your kids. Let's see. Next must have, tea kettle. We have tea all the time. It not only is relaxing and a beverage, but it is also, um, we use a, for a lot of our medicinals and things. So. Let's move on to some of the things that we stock in the pantry. So if you see here, I have all of these jars and these are all my bulk goods. So I'll have every kind of bean. I have rices, I have flaxseed, I have lentils, I have chia, and I have quinoa that I've laid out here. Those are absolute must have staples. If you look in the chapter of Clean Your Plate book, you'll see that there's the fresh fridge formulas. These are the things that I have cooked up and ready and they're in the fridge. All I have to do is I just take them. They're already cooked. You can, 
you can just eat them with your fresh raw vegetables. I take them and I put them in as the base. I toss in all the vegetables that I want to toss in, maybe add a sauce or two. There's my lunch. I don't even have to worry about cooking it, reheating it. I can pop it off, take it off to work or a picnic or wherever we're going, and it's easily done. Um, and we all know that the dried beans, lentils, these are the these are unprocessed. <laughs> they're just they're dehydrated and they're ready to rehydrate and use. Okay. Next, we don't use sugar. I'll use xylitol, sometimes stevia, which is an herb. And then we also have coconut sugar. So if I am baking anything, I'm replacing it with coconut sugar, xylitol, which are usually the easier to replace with. Um, and and some, sometimes stevia. That's a little bit harder because it doesn't equival, equivalate. Is that a word? Um, it's not equivalent when the recipe calls for a cup. It doesn't, it doesn't, what is that word? It doesn't transfer. One of the things that is also a must have for us, we use hemp protein. So if you don't like all of those put together protein powders that you can buy at the store, and a lot of them are, um, you definitely have to be watchful of them. We use pure hemp protein. I replace it a lot for flowers. When um, a recipe is calling for a certain type of flour, I will replace it a lot and use some hemp protein. Hemp is a, is a fantastic protein and you don't have to worry about the toxins and things that come with it. It's easily digestible. Um, it's got great carbohydrate. Next thing, we've got some almond flour. If you know me by now, I don't use traditional grain flours. I never use wheat. If anything, it's gluten-free. I always have almond flour on hand. And then we also have some coconut flour on hand. Now again, I don't do a lot of baking because if you'll read the food, food functions chapter in Clean Your Plate, you will see that basically any baked good is um, a congester food. When we are switching it over and we're using something like coconut, almond, or the hemp protein, now we're turning it into a builder. Um, but keep in mind, we still need to be eating our eliminators to balance out those more acidic foods. Okay, moving on, let's go over to what I pulled out of the fridge and the pantry. Turmeric. Turmeric is one of those anti-inflammatories. I just get this in the bulk section at our store, and I keep that handy. We make golden milk at night. I will add this to basically any soup casserole, um, a chili, Mexican dishes. Turmeric is kind of a go-to. It's a natural anti-inflammatory, which we pretty much all need. Next is coconut oil. We use this all the time. I use it as my facial moisturizer. I use it as a cleanser. I use baking soda and, and um, coconut oil to cleanse my face. We also use this as our lotion. We use, use it as an aftershave. We use it as an oil swish when we're doing oil pulling. We brush our teeth with it. Um, there's just multiple, multiple uses. Coconut oil has even been known to be used to keep teeth nice, safe, clean, and sanitary. Next, apple cider vinegar. We use apple cider vinegar just as a regular tonic for the body. It's something that can help to balance the stomach acid, but it also balances the pH acid of the body. We use it, um, you know, a few times a day or just in the morning when you wake up would be just fine. I also use this on my face. This is my toner. So after I've cleansed, I use that as my toner, and I use the coconut oil to um, moisturize after. Oh, and you know what? One other thing that we can pull out of the fridge. I can show you right now. Oops. Lemon. Got my lemon stored in a little baggie this time because I ran out of my, of my dishes. Um, I usually typically use glass, which you'll see as another critical must-have. Um, garlic is another critical must-have. You can grow that in your garden. Okay. Lemon, we didn't get quite to lemon. So obviously you make your lemon water with a lemon, but I use lemon as a toner also. It helps to lighten up any age spots or freckling and to also soothe the skin. Um, let's see, we use lemon to make lemon tea taking that first thing in the first thing in the morning with some hot water over that you make a nice hot lemon tea and that helps the liver to cleanse and purge itself after storing all the toxins during the night these are coffee grounds now I don't drink coffee but they are a must-have for me um, because my husband will drink coffee and save the grounds for me I use the coffee grounds as an exfoliator and we use coffee for coffee enemas so that's the way that we see coffee the coffee plant used as medicinal Next must have, we use glass dishes. We try to reduce the, the plastics in our house. Um, so these are just Pyrex glassware. Um, we try not to use plastic wraps and baggies and Tupperwares, you know, rubber, rubber plastic dishes. Um, and that's just because we're trying to reduce the amount of hormones and 
become leaching toxins into our food. This is absolutely a must for me, charcoal powder. We use charcoal powder for so many things, um, and it, it's, it's so wonderfully soothing. When I was working in the hospital pharmacy, it was used so often for people like, that had motorcycle accidents and they were, had burn rash, and so I thought, um, why wouldn't I use this on my skin, like for the eczema, when, I, when it felt like it was so burning on my skin? And so I use charcoal in, in so many ways. It's known to be used as a tooth whitener. I even use it on the face sometimes as an exfoliator. I will use charcoal um, when I get like an itchy spot on my skin and it helps to soothe it and it helps to pull the toxins out. So again, you know, there's a place for everything. Um, it, it always, always, I should put as my disclaimer, this is what we do, these are our experiences, this is what I'm sharing with you. Always, if you have any questions, go talk to your healthcare provider and see if it's appropriate for you. Next thing, castor oil. Castor oil is one of those things that we use often. It's a natural emollient. Um, it's made from the castor bean. So it not only is used on the skin, but it nourishes the skin and it protects the skin. So if you do have any um, issues with sensitive skin, castor oil is wonderful that. We use castor oil packs with that. Um, different kinds of bites and, and stings and infection kind of things. Castor oil is just nice to have around for that. Next, I'm gonna show you my little bag here. This happens to be a Melaleuca bag, but um, not necessarily because it's got Melaleuca products. I just found it, a friend of mine had it, but it says first aid kit right in front of it. And I love that because anybody that goes into my house and I say, grab the first aid kit, they know exactly what it is. It says it right on the bag. So I'm gonna go into a few things. Obviously in your first aid kit, you're gonna have your basic first aid supplies. You know, the scissors and the tapes and the gauze and that kind of stuff. But my point in talking to you about this is what do we have that's naturally in the home that can aid and assist many of um, the just kind of the, the natural daily incidences that happen. I'm gonna show you a few things that are absolute musts in, in my first aid kit. Arnica gel. So this is one is, is a trauma relief gel that it's Arnica. Arnica is used to put on bruises or bumps, and it's so soothing and cooling, and it doesn't sting. So anytime Dash knocks his knee on something, we put some Arnica on it right away, and it oftentimes will reduce the amount of bruising and swelling that comes. I keep gauze pads and first aid tape. I don't get into a lot of Band-Aids. Um, we kind of just make our own with the gauze when we need it. I keep an ace band drop anytime we need support. That has nothing to do with food or, or nourishment of any kind. But some of the supplements that I do stock up on, we have a couple droppers that we keep in our first aid kit. Um, some we can make from herbals. You might know people that are herbalists and that you can get yours from. I have various combos. I have one that's an upper respiratory combo. I have one that's a virus combo. I have one that's a bacterial combo. Again, the intention is not to cure, treat, heal, or diagnose any illness or disease, but the intention is to be able to have on hand using nature's plant medicines to support the body's own natural processes, especially the detox and immune boosting processes that, um, that it works through. We have a bottle of histamine. That's another one of the droppers. Histamine is kind of the homeopathic world's version of Benadryl. Um, it's something that we just keep on hand for those of us in our family that have food, um, food intolerances and react to different foods. And we also keep it on hand just for any, any time that we would have used like a Benadryl, for example. Again, medicine is a time and place. There's a time and place for everything. I trust that you're gonna use your common sense to figure out when it's a time that you need to seek some care and attention and when it's something that you can do for yourself. So I was gonna show you if it's easy access here. I told you I make a dandelion tincture. There it is. Oh, you can see all my garden pickles up in there. Okay. So in this dark bag, I've got it stored in, a, in just a dark bag so that sunlight don't get at it. This is my dandelion tincture, and every year I just chop up the roots and the stem and the leaves of the dandelions, and I soak them um, completely covered in, in just a high-proof alcohol like vodka, and we succuss it and we shake it every day and we sit it out in the sun, and then after about two weeks we strain that off, and then we fill, strain it through a coffee filter, and we keep this as dandelion tincture that we can use just as the body's natural 
um, assistance to the to the liver's processes. So again, dandelions are very nourishing. We tend to um, make use of all of the benefit that nature has intended simply with dandelions. So two of the most important things that I wanted to show you was what you have specifically in your own backyard. Red raspberry leaves, red raspberries, the plantain, um, the dandelions. Dandelions and plantain grow everywhere and they're some of the most commonly used easily and, and but nobody knows about them. So now that you know that they're in your yard, they definitely have some strong body medicinal purposes that we want to take a look at. Let's see. Um, also in my first aid kit, it's important to know, I will keep either some dried fruit or even just a bottle of orange juice because if anybody has, you know, in my family, like Evan had some situations and he went into shock and that just made him feel real weak and real hypoglycemic. So we keep the orange juice in there just in case anybody is needing that quick, quick boost. So that is what I would say are the absolute um, top must have things that you must have to stock your kitchen pantry and first aid kit with. I'm gonna show you something, last thing that we use all the time, um, enzymes. Enzymes are naturally found in your food. So again, the number one thing that I said was something to have, be your absolute must have was your garden. If you're eating fresh raw fruits and vegetables, you are getting natural plant enzymes. Enzymes are what are the catalyst for every action in your body. And digestive enzymes are the ones that break down your food. So if you look in, the, in your clean your plate and you look at food functions and you read about the law of nourishment, if, you do, if you're not aware of any of those, go on to drfoodie.live, look up any more of the nourishment principle education packets that we have. Um, enzymes are one of the top things that I'm constantly recommending generally mostly coming from from foods from food sources so if you look up those law of nourishment and some of our other packages you're going to see that we talk about um, snacking on and eating fresh raw fruits and vegetables before any meal and the reason is, is so that you're getting natural raw enzymes into your body so that you can break down the other things that are coming in i hope you found this super useful it was super fun making it i look forward to seeing you on drfoodie.live and if you have any questions, please just email us at info at drfoodie.live.